That's the second time this week. Fortunately, they didn't get away with anything, but uh, we do now have a broken fridge lying in the street for PC Plod to have a look at. Nobody caught the reg number, so I suspect that white transit van will strike again in the future. So while we wait for the police to begin their inquiries and for database to run upstairs and uh, check with Fast Insurance if they're still covered for this type of thing, let's uh, go back a couple of months and begin the construction of the interiors for this office building. Big thanks to you guys for all of the uh, interest and feedback that I've been getting over the past year on the layout. Uh, with each year, I uh, seem to gather more and more people who are interested in seeing how this layout is coming along, so that's very much appreciated. And as I've said previously, this started as a hobby, it will continue to be a hobby, and uh, I haven't changed the format yet, and you guys seem to like it, so uh, let's stick to a, another good few years of just cracking on getting projects completed on the layout. We've got an awful long way to go, particularly over on the station. That is the next area that really needs some progress, really. I mean, we've got a road and a wall. Great. Uh, we need to get cracking and get some stuff on there. So if I can get some buildings up there to the same sort of standard as this, I'll be pretty happy. So let's hand over to myself back at the end of October when I started to uh, make more progress on the interior for this structure. And uh, I wish you all a happy new year and I look forward to providing a good few videos for 2020. So as you can see we've got a lot of little bits and pieces going on over there. We'll come on to those in a minute. Uh, but we'll just quickly remind ourselves of where we're up to. This was what I built previously. So this is one of the sections of the first floor where we have various workers, computer terminals, desks, filing cabinets and so on. To give you an idea of scale there is a 10 pence coin against the scene so you can see really just how small the various little details are particularly the phones and the computers they were uh, not particularly easy to paint but you can see it's worth adding little things like that it just uh, makes the scene. So I've got another section of floor over here and this is going to go into the uh, second floor. So basically we're looking through those two windows up there and the idea is to expand on the insurance company that I've started to build and we'll uh, keep going and filling out more floors and eventually get to the shops and anything else that I wish to add. So you can see I've pre-prepared a number of bits and pieces a um, fair bit of this stuff comes from scale model scenery some of it comes from 3D printing corner off of eBay and some of it comes from Keybury. So as you can see we've got some desks and we also have the beginnings of various bits of kitchen furniture. We're going to be doing a, a sort of little breakout area, a little kitchen area, nothing too crazy. Um, but I'll be using companies I've worked for in the past as inspiration for this. It's usually not a very large area but somewhere for workers to uh, you know, relax and have a bite to eat would certainly be useful. So you can see we've got a kitchen sink in a unit there and we've also got a microwave and a fridge. These items are 3D printed and I bought those from 3D Printing Corner off of eBay. I just googled 00 scale fridge and kept surfing the internet until I uh, found something that would uh, suit the scene I'm trying to do. Particularly like the microwave. It's a tiny little object when you're painting it you only have to uh, breathe out a bit too heavily and it'll uh, fly across the room. But uh, fantastic little beast and even the uh, the fridge has all of the refrigeration pipe work and associated stuff that you would see on the back of a typical fridge and then by combining those with other things like these cardboard boxes and these desks from scale model scenery you can really create quite a busy little scene I've also knocked up this uh, very small uh, toilet block which will be going inside the building as you can see it's very very small and that is to be expected for a tiny little business like this. You're not going to have lovely toilet facilities unfortunately. A small block like that also allows some much needed privacy as the building does have quite a lot of windows.
Okay, so there we have the next uh, floor completed. Not really a lot going on up here, as you can see. A few phones and uh, a lot of people seem to be reading the newspaper. So business is obviously flourishing at this place. A couple of the uh, details are a bit different on this floor. You can see the chairs are different. We've got the classic uh, sort of spinny chairs. They're usually too small, the really cheap ones. Finished in a lovely shade of salmon. We also have a couple of cardboard boxes here. These are again from scale model scenery, as are the desks. Got a basic uh, shelving unit at the back there, and the uh, small toilet block. And then we've got uh, the desks all really sort of uh, squeezed in quite close together. I'm trying to sort of create that you know, sort of you know cluttered um, small business really. Desks all over the place, stuff all over the place, filing cabinets here and there have to squeeze past to get to things. I've added a couple of bits to this scene as well. You can see we've got a cardboard box and I've just added a few more papers just to add a bit more interest. They don't necessarily have to be you know, taken as newspapers from this distance. It's just paperwork with text on it. So you could argue that they're, they're actually doing some work. Depends on your point of view. And there we have both of the floors installed. You can see it looks uh, nice and busy. The addition of some lighting in there will really bring that area to life. We'll be able to see the details further back. Here we have the next section. As you can see, I've used some different colored carpet tiles and I've also just split the, uh, the area in two. So basically the idea is this side will have a small kitchen, sort of breakout area. You know, it's, a, it's not very big. It's the sort of size you would expect uh, for a business of this size. And then we have another room here of the same size which I'll be using as a sort of, uh, not necessarily a manager's office, but um, somebody of uh, seniority will be in here, maybe a couple, maybe the sales team or something, who knows. We'll try and get two or three desks in there. I think that'll look quite good. And we'll have the, uh, the kitchen uh, slash breakout area next door. Okay, well, a fair bit of time has passed, but we have accomplished quite a lot of little bits and pieces, and uh, we're still ongoing, we're still not finished, but uh, quite happy with it. I'm, I'm not going crazy with it, I mean, it is very small. I mean, there's a juice glass to give you some perspective. There's my hand to give you perspective. This is tiny, so we haven't got to go nuts with the details. You can do a lot less than this, or do more than this. It really doesn't matter. Just that there's something through the window, will provide a level of interest. It doesn't matter how good it is. That said, I have got a little bit carried away with the kitchen. I'm very pleased with how that's come out. You can see we've got tables, chairs, bin, sink, cupboards, and even a uh, microwave, fridge, and a coffee blender. Next door we have the small office where we can actually see some of the employees have actually been doing some work. There's a couple of documents between the newspapers there and a few more on that side with a uh, chart on the wall that uh, could represent staff turnover. We've also got some files in there, could be the accounts, who knows. And then obviously we've got these bits that we did previously where everybody is basically not doing any work. So since I've done those couple of bits we've turned our attention to uh, starting to do some of the shops and shop fittings. And you can see the electronic shop is starting to take shape. We've got some uh, some shelving, which I've just made out of uh, some scrap materials. And we've got a little, a little desk over there where you, you know, pay for stuff. We'll, we'll try and put a cash register on there. Um, so now we need some electronic goods to go on the shelves. We have a name for the uh, insurance company. Thought it was only fitting. And uh, I thought about doing like a printed sign, but I really like the idea of sort of some raised um, lettering. It, it gives the building that sense of age and uh, it's just a bit nicer to look at than just something that's printed out. 
And then here, just uh, again using more scraps from scale model scenery. Uh, most of them came out of this uh, sprue of MDF. Um, and we've uh, just started to create a couple of uh, electronic goods uh, of the time period just to uh, make the electronic store look a little bit more interesting. So I've just painted these with some Vallejo acrylic paints. And you can see we've got uh, the representation there of the classic uh, 1980s wood grained television. And then we also have some newer models, some newer Sonys or whatever you want, um, that have come into stock. And then we have some, uh, some other objects here that could be microwaves or computers. Who really knows? Again, these don't have to look uh, super good or anything like that, but they should provide a nice bit of interest looking through the windows of the electronic store into the shelves there. Okay, that's going to pretty much do it for the interior of the uh, computer shop. As you can see, they seem to have uh, a bit of an abundance of TVs or computer monitors if you prefer, uh, but given the colours I've painted them, these are most likely going to be TVs. At the back there we've got some uh, big box computer games, a couple of VCRs on the top just there, and uh, some very questionable knockoff PCs that look a little bit like microwaves, or maybe the shop has branched out into microwaves, who knows. I've also made a small cash register, and just using a few scraps we've built a desk there as well at the correct height, um, so people can purchase whatever they want from this small shop. And I've stuck a TV just down here on the side, perhaps somebody's brought it in for repair or it's defective. It's only getting uh, two of the four channels that were advertised. Just working on the last couple of floors for the building. This is the store on the left hand side on the ground floor and I was a little bit torn on what to do with it but uh, I've decided to make it into a somewhat basic cafe. As you can see there's not really a lot going on in there but it just you know adds a bit of interest and creates that little bit of something to see through the windows. We've got a few tables, magazines, vending machine, counter to purchase bits and pieces and uh, on the left hand side I have added a door on the wall that is behind that so the idea is there is a very basic small kitchen just behind. So there we have it, if you give it a bit of context, throw a few menus up on the wall, doesn't look too bad. This open area here is where the main door is to get in. And there's a combination of uh, scratch built and kit built, the vending machine is a kit from scale model scenery. The tables are the desk kit from Scale Model Scenery, but I've just uh, adapted them slightly and left them as tables. And then the plastic chairs, I think, are from Keybury. Got a sprue with a few of those on. And then things like the counter and the menus and stuff, they're just scratch built using odds and ends. Same goes for the cash register. That's just been scratch built using a few bits and pieces. Who creates the right effect? looks suitably ancient and about the right size. And then we have a chef behind the counter. Not sure why he's behind the counter, but there he is. Don't know where this figure came from. I've had this in my box of figures for years and years and never really did have an appropriate place um, to put him. So I thought to uh, put him inside this small cafe. Okay, well I've pretty much finished the uh, interiors, so now work has moved on to the uh, frames that hold the interiors that go inside the building. So here we have the section for the right hand side, this is the one that has the electronic store on the ground floor. So I've just painted the walls a matching colour to the shop, put a few posters up, doors to the stockroom, things like that. And then on the office floors we've added a couple of windows and again a couple of doors. Um, as you can see, I've also added um, some LEDs, uh, basically doing one LED uh, per window. So uh, on these uh, larger floors, you'll have two LEDs uh, to light up each section, so that should be more than sufficient. I've just used some 3mm warm white LEDs, as it's what I have in stock. And uh, to be honest, actually looking through the windows, if you squint, they kind of look a little bit like, you know, 
lights, like old fashioned lights. They almost look like they're supposed to be there um, from normal viewing. As you can see, you won't see them. So you can see the lights are running. I've got them wired up at the moment all together, as you can see, but uh, each bank of lights is on its own separate circuit, so I will be able to individually um, turn floors on and off. So we could have the shops switched off and the office space lit up as if somebody's working late. This particular LED is further over to the right hand side as we have the toilet block just here and uh, that would have uh, got in the way of things. So I have taken into account the furniture that is in the various areas just to make sure we don't have any problems. So if we go for an example, let's see if we can uh, put this section in. There you go. So you can see just how the lighting really uh, brings out the details, allows you to see deep inside the building. At the moment I've just got the whole lot running through 220 ohms at 12 volts, so we can increase that to about a 470 or a 1k, see how things look. But for the moment, I'm quite pleased with that. So now I just need to do the same to the uh, building framework on the left hand side and then we should be able to pop all the interiors back in and uh, try the building out with the lighting for the first time on the layout. Okay the uh, interiors and lighting are now installed on the section of building to the left hand side. So we have the cafe scene on the ground floor, the canteen and office space for the uh, insurance company on the first floor. And then on the top floor, and this was suggested in the comments a few videos back, uh, this is going to be a karate club. The idea being the uh, insurance company has uh, downsized somewhat, isn't doing so well, and the uh, landlord for the building has rented this uh, top corner out relatively cheaply to the local karate club. This isn't quite finished. What I'd like to do is put uh, a mirror on the back wall just there, which would not only look interesting looking through, but would sort of add to the effect of a uh, karate or gym or you know, sports activity type center um, to have a nice big uh, mirror on the wall. Um, so that's something I'll add in future. And I'll also be adding the relevant signage to the windows um, just to uh, make the building look a little bit more different. The uh, LEDs are once again installed on this side. So let's get this in the building, take a look at the whole thing. Okay, here we go. All the LEDs are wired up together at the moment, so they will all operate with the same switch, but I will change that so that we can turn on certain floors.
Okay, well I must say I am quite pleased with it. It has been an awful lot of work to get to this point, but uh, very happy with the result. There's almost no light bleed whatsoever out of the actual walls of the building. All of the light coming out of the windows, and I think that's thanks to the inner framework for each of the uh, separate rooms, effectively giving the building two walls. So if any light is getting out of the framework that's holding the interiors, it's then blocked by the actual case of the building. It certainly seems to have worked. I love how the, uh, the light comes out through the window panels and the doors, it creates that beautiful shadow, which will look really good against the pavement and the road. The wall here needs a lick of paint, something I've missed. You can see the wall for the kitchen is white, so we just need to paint that. Well, it's been about another four or five hours of work into the project, and uh, while it's not finished, I can certainly at least say we're now on the road to completion. So basically, I've just been adding further detail to the building just to make it look that little bit more interesting. I've been using uh, stuff like the uh, the evergreen strip, you know, just those pre-made straight pieces of plastic, and you can use those to add various trims and bits of stuff to the building. And while it's not strictly necessary, it does just add a little something. And as you can see, it also uh, gives you an opportunity to just add a little bit more painted detail to the buildings, or the uh, shops rather. So I put a frame around the, the doors and things like that. We've also completed the signage for the building. So you can see we have Fast Insurance, KP Foods and Database. If we move around the side of database, you can see I've done a little bit more advertising. Got an Amiga 500 full setup, and uh, I, oh, I can't even remember what the machine on the left is. You'll know. Somebody will know in the comments. Might be an Amstrad. I can't remember. But uh, there you go. And then I've just added this little bit of detail on the uh, corner. This represents a fire exit or personnel access to the office space above, you would not be expected to have to walk through the shop um, to get to the first or second floor. So here we have stairwell access, that's the whole reason we have these smaller windows on both ends of the building here. This is to represent the, uh, the stairwells, the access to the various floors above. They'll then have through access into the back of the shops um, you know, to get to things like the stock rooms and small kitchen for KP Foods. Uh, basically, the stuff that uh, I haven't bothered modelling because you can't see any of it. If we move around KP Foods, you can see I've done the, uh, the other side of the restaurant itself. And we have a similar um, recessed door with a brick uh, facade representing the uh, access to... Uh, the rear of the building and the stairwells to the various floors above. So I'm quite happy with it now. It does still need a few more details and we will add those. Just a few more bits and pieces, but we're well on the road to completion now. I can add a few things to it in future, but uh, the main uh, bulk of the project is now done, which is very relieving as this has probably taken somewhere like 30 hours or something to produce. Um, it has been quite a lot of work but I'm looking forward to applying the skills that I've learned um, to future projects on the layout. We can perhaps get even more ambitious um, with the buildings. This is really my first um, serious attempt at uh, doing this sort of thing. Most of the work has been focused on the interiors, which is to be expected. I mean, a building like this, we knock it up fairly quickly. It only took me a couple of days to put the building together. Uh, most of the work, as I say, was on the interior, but certainly worth the effort. As it sits now, it looks fine, you know, it's clearly a, a model of a building, but uh, it's got no depth to it. But as soon as you turn the lights on, it's like, whoa, there's lots going on in there. It really draws the eye in and should uh, make that corner of the layout look quite interesting.
Okay, so here we are. I've installed the uh, building in its foundations and uh, while we wait for a few bits and pieces to dry, I've just uh, finished up the electrics so now we can switch each room on and off. So now we can create some different scenes depending on the lighting on the layout. So for example now it's late at night, so let's say the uh, office workers have gone home, but the karate club and the shops are still open. You could also say it's very late at night, everybody's gone home, but for some mad reason somebody is working late in the office and then they need to go get a cup of tea from the break room. There you go. So it's nice to be able to have that flexibility and turn bits and pieces on and off basically and potentially have the whole thing switched off. Okay, well that's pretty much going to bring this video to a close. Hope you enjoyed it, perhaps picked up a few hints and tips. Certainly a steep learning curve for me. This is the first time I've taken scratch building anywhere near this level, and I'm certainly no expert, but we have accomplished a few bits and pieces, and I must say I am quite happy with the results. There is still some work to do. I need to sort out paving for this side, and we need to better sort out the foundations of the structure as the road slopes away, but uh, that'll be a job for the new year. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the interest and the feedback, and uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I look forward to making a little bit more progress in 2020 than I did in 2019 on the layout, but we'll see how things go. After all, this is just my hobby. So we'll close things out with another run of the uh, silly little robbery scene that we played at the beginning of this video. Did enjoy doing that, only took uh, about 20-25 minutes to film and it is very handy having the working road so that I can move that white van in a prototypical fashion, make it look all that more realistic. So we look forward to playing around with scenes like that in the future. And I'll leave you a link at the end as well for Dean Park Station as it was Dave's uh, depot office that certainly got the uh, creative juices going for uh, really pushing with the interior on this building. Originally I didn't plan on uh, doing all that much of an interior on it and after seeing his structure it really opened my eyes up to what was really possible. Uh, so I look forward to doing that to other buildings in the future but uh, it's certainly a long job. It's not something you can just throw together over a weekend.